This is the old gem manager inside of Google Gemini. And if you go to create a gem, you can give it a name, a description, and some instructions, and you can see a preview of what is happening on the right. And this gem is still very good if you have a text heavy generation and you want to use a lot of text. However, as you can see here, they have an entire new experience. And to get this, you go on Gemini and then you can click gems. And when you're on gems at the top, you have this whole new gems made by labs. And if you scroll down, we can see my gems for labs. I actually just removed all the ones I had. These are the ones on Opal. So if you've not used that, it's on Opal. And now it is built into Gemini itself. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it and why it is really cool. And if you keep scrolling down, you can actually see the text-based gems, the ones that were originally there. And these are very good as well. And I have a bunch of videos on how to get the most out of these gems over here. But today we're talking about these new app-based gems. So these are going to create like an app-like experience for you. So you can actually hit show more. And these are all the ones like Google gives you. And you can remix any of these. And some of them are actually pretty good. So you can actually see like a list of different things here. So let's actually just start off with this recipe genie. So we're going to click remix on the recipe genie. And what that's going to do is open up a screen that looks like this. So we have just like a really easy way to edit this. And you can see the steps here, it provides ingredients, and then it's going to generate a recipe. And here's all the different steps of things it's going to take to give us our answer. So let's actually just kind of go through this first. And I'm going to move myself over here. And I'm going to show you what this looks like and how it works. So this is a recipe genie, and we're going to remix this and we can rename it. We can do a lot of stuff, but for now we're going to hit start. And now we can actually upload an image of our fridge or type in ingredients instead. Let's say I just have this random list here, eggs, milk, and salt, butter, sharp cheddar cheese, baby spinach, Greek yogurt, Dijon mustard, a jar of pickles, maple syrup, and leftover pizza. It's just a random assortment of stuff. You can see here, it's going to think and generate a recipe for us based off whatever is in our fridge. So this is a gem, but it's also like a miniature app because it has like a nice GUI and it's able to go through all these different steps and actually create something for us. So you can see here, it's generating the recipe images and then it's going to make a suggestion web page. So you can actually see it kind of go through. We can see the progress bar. It actually looks really nice. We can even click here. We can make it expanded, full view. We can share our application if we want out to the world so everyone can access our application here. And we can also edit the steps. So we can give it a prompt and say, hey, I want you to do this or whatever we want. So we're going to make some adjustments in a second, but you can actually see the recipe suggestion. So leftover pizza plus spinach frittata, and you can actually see the ingredients here and the instructions, and we can actually see a nice little image that it's generated and even added the pickles and we can see everything that is here. So this is pretty cool, right? And we can even download the file so we can make adjustments so we can say, hey, have the user enter the number of people to adjust the serving size for the ingredient list. So we can actually hit enter here and it's going to edit our app. So it's going to like plan it out. It's going to update the input parameters and it's going to go through and make adjustments to make our app application come to life. Now we can see these steps have updated. So provide ingredients, provide the number of people, and then it goes through and generates everything like before. So this time around, if we actually hit start and we go through the same exact thing, I'm going to give it the exact same ingredients. We're going to hit submit. And that says how many people we be serving. So let's say we're serving three people and now we can hit go. And this time around, it's actually going to make adjustments to the ingredients based off three people. So you can see we have created a recipe app and I could even took a photo of my fridge and just sent it in and uh, Gemini's multimodal is really good but we just made an entire recipe app that adjusts the servings based off the number of people we have and it, this is pretty cool and you're going to see the output in just a second and then I want to show you this whole open advanced editor thing because you can do it just through like this little text box and just type in whatever you want. Uh, here we go. You can see the maple kiss scramble eggs with cheesy spinach, and it gives you some options. So it's not the same as before, but you can see, and it tells us the number of ingredients we need and instructions for both things. So that's kind of cool, but we also have this advanced editor. So if we click that, it's going to actually open up a new page and going to tell me I have to sign in again. So let's do that. All right. So here we are. You can actually see our application on the right. So we can see a preview of everything that's going on. We can see the console and the console is just basically telling us, hey, here's the things that it's doing as it's doing it. If there's any errors, you can kind of go in the console and get an idea. We can also run like any part. So if we want to put in like 
this number here, you can actually see the output of what it's actually receiving, which is kind of cool. So we can like play around with outputs of console. If there's any errors, we can see the steps. We can also adjust the theme. So if we want to generate a specific theme, we can do that. So a classic red and white checkerboard food theme. And now we can hit go and it's going to generate an entire theme for our application. So we can make adjustments and we can also just probably go back here and type it in where my head is and we can edit the steps and we can make adjustments to our application, but we can also do it in here. So you can see like the red and white checkerboard pattern here. It's starting to update our application so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, not exactly what I had in mind, but it still works. That's the important thing. If we come over, we have app at the top, so you can always make the app like the full page, or we come back to editor. And when you're on editor, you have the option, so you can hit like provide ingredients, and you can see the ingredients you have on hand. We can actually do different settings. We can see generate recipe, and here is the prompt that we are generating for our recipe. And then we can also say, hey, generate the images. And Again, we can see the prompt for the images that we're generating. And then we can actually see the output of everything that it is going to output. We can add assets, so we can upload file, videos. We can adjust what the output is. We can have multiple outputs. We can say, hey, can we generate something with Gemini 2.5 Flash or Pro? Or we can plan and execute and do deep research and generate images. And you can even generate videos and sounds and music. So the number of combinations is absolutely incredible. And just like I showed you before, you can still type down here and still edit steps, or you can just come straight on Gemini and edit steps. So it is Google Opal, but it's built into Gemini. And now you're getting text-based gems as well as like app-based gems, which are kind of cool. And I didn't really show you, but you can just like link the things together. So you can say, okay, once you provide the ingredients, I actually want to generate a recipe here, but I want to generate something else as well. So, you know, say, hey, maybe if you bought these ingredients, what ingredients can I buy that I'm missing to make another something? And then we can have it output here. So our application now will not only generate recipes for the ingredients we have, but it can also give suggestions of new things we can try if we bought, you know, this extra ingredient that we're missing. And we just have to click here and we can add, we can add system instructions and then we come to the output and we can generate whatever the output is. So this is really cool on how you can use all this. So let's actually go back to Gemini for a second. So we're back on gems made by labs and you can kind of see things that are possible. So the recipe one is cool. Take a photo of your fridge. You can turn any topic into an animation. So you can do something like that because it's Nano Banana Pro. It's able to do really cool things in that way. You can also do learn with YouTube. So you can turn any video into a quiz. And this one is actually really cool. I played around with this one prior. So if you give it a URL, it'll extract the transcript. And then from there, it will create educational content, which will then generate a quiz. And this is really good if you want to, if you want to learn something from a specific topic. So maybe we want to do more than just do YouTube. I guess I should have went back and I should say remix this. So let's hit remix and let's just create like an real crazy educational tool. So now my prompt is instead of collecting URLs for a YouTube video, I want to allow the user to submit a website link, a video URL, and upload files or a combination of all of the above. And I number two, I want the tool to gather all the data and then analyze and then generate a summary of the important stuff and then create image flashcards, create a quiz and display a report. So you can see here, we're going to take their app and turn it from just like this educational YouTube tool to like a generalized educational tool. So you can see it's going through all the steps. It's creating our application for us. And this is really cool because we're turning this whole YouTube remix feature into just a generalized educational tool. And if you're a student or not a student, it doesn't matter. You can use this now and you can provide an information. You can learn about a topic and you can really test yourself about what you know. So it's kind of a cool way of using Opal to learn stuff. And then I want to learn about Sam Altman because he's my go-to. So let's hit that. And now we, and you'll notice that it's saying, Hey, please enter a YouTube video ID. And I don't think it understood. I want to like, just do all everything in one spot. So it didn't quite understand that it wants me to do like website URLs and then YouTube URLs. And it's just like, no, I want to put it on one spot and I might not have a YouTube link. So it depends on what I have. And 
I realize I spelled it wrong, but it is smart enough to understand what I'm doing. And actually, as I say that, my head's in the way, so you don't even see the prompt I put in because it is right here. Now you can see my spelling. <laughs> All right, so you can see it is updating and it's going to refactor and it's going to make modifications. So just to show you that you can make adjustments and I do want to show you like failure along the way, I want to be transparent. Let's try this again, start. And now we can enter YouTube links or article URLs and we can just like upload our responses. So we can actually just paste in whatever we want. I actually have this video here, I don't know, it seemed kind of interesting, the dark history of Sam Altman. Let's enter that in as well. We have like two links in there and it's making progress. We can still make modifications. You can always go to the advanced editor and like modify it ourselves. But you can see it's consolidating and processing our inputs and it's going to do everything we asked for in our little prompt. So we can see it kind of all working through the steps here and you can kind of see it like loading through. It's like spinning and then it's going to analyze and create everything that we have asked for. And this is pretty cool. I just want to show you as well because it's actually kind of fun to run it in this view as well because you can see it like thinking and running. You can actually see the console log of everything it's doing. So we can see it gather the data from Wikipedia. It's really cool because you can actually see exactly how it like pieces it all together so you can see like the person and the full name and it just kind of goes through everything it needs to know and of course you can see the quiz and the answers and you can kind of see it's generating the flashcards as well whether you're on opal with your study guide and your summary and your quiz or on gemini you get the same exact experience because it is now a graphical gem it's an app gem you can see how the quiz works you can see the questions and the answers and if we keep going down we can even see our flashcards that flip up and around and like i said before we can actually hit share app and we can actually publish our opal and we can view permissions and just share this out with whoever we want so in terms of like how to use this think about it from the perspective of things you do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you work for a business or you own a business, you can use it for marketing information. If you post on social media often, you can actually create workflows to allow you to enter in a link to maybe a blog post you have, and it can read the entire blog post and then create a tweet for you, and then maybe an Instagram post and so on and so forth. Or maybe you can make it just allow you to enter in a PDF or upload a product, and from that product that you upload, it can then go forward and create images and little marketing videos and stuff like that. Maybe do content creation. It can totally help you there. Coming up with like hook ideas for videos or whatever you want to do. As I mentioned prior, maybe you want to create like a movie recommendation or something that gives you like a summary of a movie. You can totally do that. You can do it with books. Have it create YouTube playlists for you, which is really cool. So if you're like, tell it your mood and now it's going to generate a playlist based off your mood of songs or videos or whatever you want. And then one of the examples is really cool as well. You can upload an image and from the image, it can create a Google Calendar event. So if the image has like time, date, place, whatever, you can create an Opal or a Google Gem app that does that as well. So really the possibilities are endless. I do briefly want to discuss how well it works. And this new gem has only gone out for maybe the last two and a half weeks. I think it was released about three weeks ago, and it works pretty well. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So imagine these as like quick little apps that can help you get stuff done really quickly and things that you do a lot of. It's not the best for like text heavy things. So if you're doing something text heavy, definitely use the old gems, not this new version, because the old version was much better for text based stuff. This is more like apps that have like a nice GUI that can output images, videos, and kind of like multimodal and combine things together. Is it great? Is it perfect? Not by any stretch of the imagination, but it is the worst that it'll ever be and it'll only get better from here on out. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What are you using it for? Do you have any ideas? If you share your ideas, chances are it might help someone else get them inspired. So drop that comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, tell the algorithm, hey, I enjoy this type of content. I want to see more of it. And do subscribe for more AI, cover AI fairly regularly so you can stay up to date with everything that is happening in the AI world because it updates very quickly and subscribing is free, so just do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. AI tools, AI